Aiden Anthos, Wikipedia article audio. Aiden Anthos is a genus of Australian native shrubs in the flowering plant family Proteaceae. Variable in habit and leaf shape, it is the only genus in the family where solitary flowers are the norm. It was discovered in 1791, and formally published by Jacques Le Billardier in 1805. The type species is Aden anthos cuneatus, and 33 species are recognized. The genus is placed in subfamily Proteoidae, and is held to be most closely related to several South African genera. Endemic to Australia, its centre of diversity is southwest Western Australia, where 31 species occur. The other two species occur in South Australia and Western Victoria. They are mainly pollinated by birds. Description Habit The growth habits of Aden anthos species range from prostrate shrubs to small trees, with most species occurring as erect shrubs. There are two basic growth forms. Plants that lack a lignotuber have a single stem. Such plants usually grow into fairly erect shrubs, and sometimes the main stem thickens to become a trunk, resulting in a small tree. Plants with a lignotuber, on the other hand, have many stems arising from the underground rootstock, usually resulting in smaller shrubs with a mallee habit. As with most other Proteaceae genera, leaf shape is highly variable in Aden anthos. Though the leaves are always simple, they may be lobed, or even deeply divided into segments, usually by three. This segmentation has its extreme in the distinctive leaf form characteristic of those Aden anthos species known as woolly bushes, in which the leaf is segmented, sometimes many times into long thin lacinii, round in cross-section, and often covered in a fine down of soft hairs. The number of lacinii varies greatly. In A. pungens, for example, the leaves may be entire, or there may be a single segmentation into two or three lacinii, in A. cerisers, the leaf is repeatedly tri-segmented into as many as fifty lacinii. This leaf form is seen in around half of the species. Other common leaf forms include a wedge-shaped leaf with shallow lobes along the apex, seen, for example, in A. cuneatus and A. stictus, the oval-shaped entire leaves of A. ellipticus and A. obovitus, and the long thin leaves of A. ditmoldii and A. barbiger. Only two species have leaves that are sharply pointed. A. pungens has a woolly bush form of leaf with pungent lacinii, and A. acanthophilus is a flat, deeply lobed leaf with sharp points along its margins. Some sources state that some leaves of some species are tipped with extra floral nectaries. Leaf Unusually for members of the family Proteaceae, Aden anthos flowers are solitary rather than clustered together in large showy inflorescences. In fact, morphologically speaking, the Aden anthos flower does occur in an inflorescence, but one in which the number of flowers has been reduced to one, leaving only a few vestigial clues to the elaborate structure from which it derived. Each flower is positioned at the end of a short peduncle. The peduncle has minute basal bracts at its base, and sometimes at its midpoint, providing evidence of the loss of some lateral axes. At the end of the peduncle sits the flower, sessile or very nearly so, and surrounded at the base by an imbricate involucre. Very rarely, an involucre may enclose two flowers rather than just one, providing further evidence of reduction from a complex, multi-flowered inflorescence. Inflorescences occur individually at the end of branches or at branch junctions. Most species have terminal inflorescences, 
and in these cases the inflorescences are usually subtended by leaves, if not branchlets, so the flowers are obscured by the foliage. The species with axillary inflorescences tend to be much more showy. The flower of Aden anthos is structurally the same as that of many other Proteaceae. Flower parts occur in multiples of four, but the four tepals are fused into a long, narrow perianth tube topped by a closed cup, the filament of each stamen is fused along its entire length with the midrib of a tepal, so that the anthers appear almost sessile, trapped within the limb, and the four carpels form a single compound pistil, the apex of which is also trapped within the limb. Four prominent scale-like nectaries surround the ovary. Inflorescence and flower Structurally, the flowers of most Aden anthos species are radially symmetrical, but in the small section Urilema, one anther is sterile and reduced to a staminode, rendering the flowers structurally merely bilaterally symmetrical. In both cases the flower soon becomes zygomorphic as the pistil grows faster and longer than the perianth tube, causing the style to flex until it pushes its way out through a slit in the perianth tube, which bends away from the style. The apex of the style, called the stigma in most flowering plants, is often referred to as the style and in Proteaceae, since it performs two distinct functions, it performs the usual stigmatic role of pollen collector, but also functions as a pollen presenter. At anthesis, both the style end and the anthers are trapped within the limb, so that when the anthers release their pollen, the pollen adheres to the style end. Shortly after pollen release, the tips of the tepals separate, causing the limb to break apart. The style end is released. The style springs erect, and the flower's pollen is thus held aloft where it may be deposited on the face of a nectariverous bird. Unlike some other Proteaceae genera, the style end of Aden anthos shows little evidence of adaption to either of its dual roles. In most species is it slightly broader than the style, and conical in shape, but in section Urilema is oval and flattened. In both cases the stigmatic groove is a furrow on one side of the style end. The fruit of Aden anthos is a simple dry hard-shelled nut that surrounds the seed but does not adhere to it. It is brown, ellipsoid in shape, and ranges in size from 3 to 8 mm long, and 1 to 2 mm wide. It is not often seen on the plant because it develops within the involucre of the flower which persists long after the flower itself has withered and fallen. By the time the fruit is mature, the involucre has dried and spread, so that the fruit is free to fall to the ground as soon as it abscesses from the plant. In some species this happens as soon as the fruit is mature, in others, the fruit may be retained on the plant for some time. Fruit and Seed the production of seedless fruit is common, as is seed abortion. When a seed is present, it is white, ellipsoidal, and nearly fills the fruit. Taxonomy Early explorers who could have seen and collected Aden anthos include Willem de Vilaming and William Dampier. Vilaming explored the Swan River and visited Shark Bay in 1697. He almost certainly collected plant specimens, as two Southwest Australian endemics were published many years later, based on specimens for which the collection cannot be attributed to any other known voyage. Two years after Vlaming, Dampier visited the northwest coast, collecting around 40 specimens of 23 plant species from sites at Shark Bay and in the Dampier Archipelago. There is no record in either case of specimens of Aden anthos being seen or collected, but A. signorum is fairly common at the Swan River, and A. acanthophyllis occurs at Shark Bay, 
albeit only at the southern end of Peron Peninsula, where neither expedition is likely to have visited. Early Collections The first known collection of the genus was made by Archibald Menzies, surgeon and naturalist to the Vancouver Expedition of 1791-1795. The Vancouver expedition discovered King George Sound in September 1791, and during their stay there Menzies collected specimens of many plant species, including two Aidenanthos species, A. cerisers. Jacques Le Billardier, naturalist to Bruni D'Entrecasteaux's S. expedition in search of the lost ships of Jean-François de Gaillot, Comte de la Perouse visited Esperance Bay on the south coast of Western Australia in 1792, collecting a cuneatus there. Publication In December 1801 and January 1802, at the start of Matthew Flinders' famous circumnavigation of Australia, HMS investigator visited King George Sound for several weeks. The botanist to the voyage, Robert Brown, made an extensive plant specimen collection, including A. cuneatus, A. cerisers and A. obovitus. A few months later he collected what would become the type specimen of A. terminalis from near Port Lincoln. As HMS investigator was commencing its anti-clockwise circumnavigation, a French expedition under Nicolas Baudin was exploring the coastline in a clockwise direction. The two expeditions famously encountered each other in 1802 at what would be named Encounter Bay in South Australia, then Baudin continued westward, arriving at King George Sound in February 1803. There, botanist Jean-Baptiste Le Chenal de la Tour, assisted by gardener's boy Antoine Guichenot, collected plant specimens including A. cuneatus, A. obovitus and A. cerisers. The genus Aidenanthos was first described and named by Le Billardier in his 1805 Novi Hollandia plant arum specimen. Though he did not give an explicit etymology for the genus name therein, the type specimen for A. cuneatus contains annotations that show Le Billardier experimenting with various Greek word stems, listing in each case the corresponding Latin transliteration and meaning. He eventually settled on Aden Anthos, formed from the Greek stems Delta Nu and Alpha Nu Theta Omicron. Irish botanist E. Charles Nelson states that the name refers to the prominent and copiously productive nectaries. Le Billardier published three species, naming them A. cuneata, A. sericea and A. obovata, giving them feminine gender consistent with his view of the gender of the genus name. He did not say which of the three was to serve as type species for the genus but Nelson has since chosen A. cuneatus as lectotype, since Le Billardier's description of it is referred to by the descriptions of the other two species. Le Billardier also did not acknowledge a collector of the specimens upon which these names were based, and so it was long thought that Le Billardier himself collected them. However, Neither A. obovitus nor the type subspecies of A. cerisers occurs at any location visited by Le Billardier, suggesting that some of his specimens were obtained from some other collector whom he failed to credit. The realization of this fact prompted a re-evaluation of the type material by Nelson, who attributed their collection to Le Chenault. This view has been accepted by some scholars though others treat it more cautiously. The framework for classification of genera within Proteaceae was laid by L.A.S. Johnson and Barbara Briggs in their influential 1975 monograph on the Proteaceae, The Evolution and Classification of a Southern Family. Their arrangement has been refined somewhat over the ensuing three decades, most notably by Peter H. Weston and Nigel Barker in 2006. Proteaceae is divided into five subfamilies, 
with Idenanthos placed in subfamily Proteoidae because of its cluster roots, solitary ovules, and indehiscent fruits. On the basis of phylogenetic data it is further placed in tribe Leucodendri, a morphologically heterogeneous group with no obvious diagnostic characters, and dominated by South African genera. Within Leucodendri it appears as sister clade to a clade comprising the South African subtribe Leucodendrini, and is therefore placed alone in subtribe Adenanthony. The placement of Adenanthos in Proteaceae can be summarized as follows. Relationships within Proteaceae The first infragenaric arrangement of Adenanthos was published in 1870 by George Bentham, in the fifth volume of his landmark Flora Australiensis. Bentham divided the genus into two sections on the basis of floral characteristics. Two species were unusual in having flowers with one sterile stamen, and perianth tubes that are curved and swollen above the middle, these were placed in a sect. Eurylema. The remaining twelve known species were placed in a sect. Stenolaema. Relationships within the genus. A phonetic analysis of the genus undertaken by Ernest Charles Nelson in 1975 yielded results in which the members of a sect, Eurylema, occurred together. Nelson therefore retained Bentham's two sections in his 1978 revision of Aden Anthos, though a sect Stenolaema was renamed to the autonym a sect. Aden Anthos, in accordance with modern rules of botanical nomenclature, he further divided a sect, Aden Anthos, into two subsections, a subsect, Anaclastos, and a subsect, Aden Anthos, but discarded them again in his 1995 treatment of the genus for the Flora of Australia series. By this time, the ICBN had issued a ruling that all genera ending in Anthos must be treated as having masculine gender. This resulted in orthographic changes to all species names in the genus, for example, A. obovata became A. obovatus. Nelson's arrangement of Aden Anthos is as follows. Nelson has published a thorough but somewhat light-hearted analysis of the common names used for this genus. He notes that the only common name applied to the genus as a whole is stick and jug but argues that this seems to be in use only within Western Australia's Department of Conservation and Land Management. Be that as it may, the name dates back at least to 1970, when Western Australian state botanist Charles Gardner gave it as the common name of Aden Anthos in the second edition of John Stanley Beard's essay Descriptive Catalogue of West Australian Plants. Nelson also notes that the phrase stick and jug does not appear in any common name of a species. The common names of species are instead based around several other generic terms that do not apply to the genus as a whole. Species Common names Distribution and habitat Ecology the centre of diversity for the genus is southwest Western Australia, to which 31 of the 33 species are endemic. The south coast of Western Australia, between the Stirling Range and the Fitzgerald River area, is particular diverse, with 17 species occurring on the Esperance Plains alone. This is one of two areas dominated by Quangan Heath a vegetation complex renowned for its species richness and high levels of endemism, the other area of Kwangan, further north on the west coast around Mount Lesueur, harbors surprisingly few Anthos species. Species occur throughout most of the southwest. In northern areas, where there are fewer species, the genus does not extend into drier inland areas, being absent from northern parts of the Avon Wheat Belt region. To the south, however, 
they extend well inland, extending even beyond the southwest into the neighboring desert, A. Argyreus occurs as far inland as Southern Cross. Eastwards along the south coast, the genus occurs in disjunct populations on isolated pockets of silicious sand surrounded by the calcareous soils of the Great Australian Bight. The most easterly occurrence in Western Australia is at Twilight Cove. The two species that occur outside southwest Western Australia are Aden anthos macropodianus, which is endemic to Kangaroo Island, and Aden anthos terminalis, which occurs in South Australia on the Eyre Peninsula and Kangaroo Island, and from Adelaide eastwards into Western Victoria. A range of honey-eater species have been observed feeding at Aden anthos flowers, including Acantharynchus tenuorostris, Anthocara chrysoptera, Philodonorus pyroptera, Philodonorus novia hollandii, Glycophila melanops, Zosterops lateralis, and Melothreptus brevirostris. One study found that the amount of time that birds spent feeding at a site was strongly correlated with the abundance of Banksia sessiles, and seemed unrelated to the amount of Aden anthos there, yet these birds nonetheless fed at Aden anthos flowers. Footnotes